Well, thanks everybody for coming back to the CEO for Life Experience podcast. And I'm here with Scott Clary. And I hope I pronounced that right, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. It's not hard. All right, <laughs> awesome. It. Yeah. And so I'm going to start every pod. I'm going to start this podcast like every podcast. I am so excited about my guest today. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I'm super, super pumped about uh, sharing Scott with you because um, I've actually stalked him through LinkedIn and several other places. Uh, learned a lot about his story through digital and social, those kind of things. And now I've had some time to spend with him. He's got a really great background in the fact that he is, he's blending a lot of things at once, but really what I want to get into him in with him about is talking about his ability to unpack playbooks and how to juggle a lot of fires and things at the same time. And I think that's super critical right now. We haven't really hit that in the CEO for life experience is how do you manage so many parallel paths at the same time without going off the edge, right, Scott? Yeah. And then, and then we're going to get into yeah. Scott's story and then we'll go through, we'll go through some of our more esoteric philosophical questions. So, no, I love so maybe it. Scott, so you start with just who yeah. you are, man. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, th- first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited about, uh, about doing this. And, and when, you know, you first reached out, um, you shared a few, a few points you like to touch on. I was excited because you spoke about, uh, or the questions sort of reflected the theme of the podcast and the show, which was, um, not just focused on what have you done in your career, how have you done it, but the things that sometimes you don't think about in, in life and career. I think that's very important because it's something that I, I, I work through and I deal with and sometimes struggle with uh, every single day. Uh, like you mentioned, managing multiple things, um, and I'll talk about what I'm doing and, and what that actually looks like. But um, so long story short, uh, my entire career has been predominantly in sales. So as an individual contributor, um, in tech sales and hardware sales, all the way through to uh, director of sales, VP sales, leading teams. Um, I'm I'm based in Toronto, Canada. Uh, you know, before the pandemic, I was down in the states, probably in New York or LA, yeah, one, once or twice a month. But now that's that's kind of changed. So I'm uh, I'm headquartered in Toronto right now. Uh, currently, um, this will play into the theme, but I do quite a bit. So right now I head up sales and marketing for a company called Excitem. Um, We build out SaaS products and software products. We are an OEM uh, and a partner company of a much larger company called Grass Valley. Um, so we, so basically I manage our internal sales team, um, which is a small team, as well as bringing um, our software products across Grass Valley sales team exclusively, which is roughly about 100 sales individuals and 400 channel partners globally. Um, I run my own podcast and, you know, maybe we'll do like a, a back and forth and I'll get you on the show as well. But my podcast is called the success, the success story podcast. And really what that podcast is meant to do is to speak to individuals who have accomplished things in their career. And the, the name of the podcast is almost a, a misnomer. It's, it, it's, it's meant to highlight people's success story, but the conversations that I have are really unpacking um, the highs and the lows and the, uh, the wins and the losses that people have dealt with on their way to where they are today, right? The, the, the result that we all see when we see success and, and what success really means. And we try and unpack those playbooks. Um, I also run a publication. So it's a medium publication uh, called ROI Overload, which is sort of something that I'm uh, very, you know, in love with the sales and marketing strategy insights, the latest and greatest in tech um, and, and tools and technologies and what's working today because I still live it. I still breathe it. I still um, actually build out these types of strategies for my own team and for uh, Grass Valley sales team. Um, so that's a publication where people contribute different articles and I manage that. I also write a newsletter, uh, again, same name, ROI Overload, focus on the same stuff, sales and marketing strategies. Um, and uh, outside of that, those are sort of like my core things. Um, I've tried to build a, a brand online across all social that's pretty strong, focus again on a lot of sales, marketing, uh, some entrepreneurship topics, startup topics, just things that I like, things that I've lived through. Um, trying to teach over things that I've learned over my career um, so that hopefully, you know, somebody else can, can learn from uh, my experience as well as, you know, the, the theme of the podcast and a lot of the stuff that I put out is just other people's experiences as well. So that's kind of like my 360 of where I'm at today in my life. Uh, do you want me to go through like my, I go through my backstory too, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass yeah. it over to you first. Oh well, yeah. So what I'd like to, you know, unpack is, you know, because 
I want to leave a little bit of your backstory out right now because I want to encourage people to connect with you. I think that is what's important beyond these podcasts is don't just let it live in your ears or mm-hmm. in your eyes when you're watching it. Reach out for the people that are that are in the podcast that that catch your attention because the universe has brought this person to you for some reason. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to link all the information up on how to get in touch with Scott either above or below where you're watching this or listening to it. But, you know, so I'll let people get in touch with you about more of those details to that process, Scott, because, all right. again, reach out and connect with, with folks. Um, so what I'd like to do in, in, before we jump into some of these questions is, um, so one of the things that I thought was important that we hadn't touched on was how do you, how do you begin to prioritize and manage what you're doing? Because you are, you, are, you are corporately bound to your responsibilities on delivering and what you're doing in sales, but you're also building a brand and giving yourself away to people and investing in them. So how do you prioritize that time? Are they the same? Do you see them differently? Walk through that because I think that's an important thing people are have as an obstacle right now is they think, oh, I guess you got to do this nine to five. No, you don't, right? So, mm-hmm. so maybe walk through that a little bit. So I think the most important thing um, that I've learned over my career is to develop systems and processes for absolutely everything um, that I do so that I can maintain success in my corporate obligations, which obviously, you know, you never, you never bite the hand that feeds you. So you want to exceed, like I have revenue numbers that I have to exceed. Um, I have my own KPIs that I'm held accountable to. Uh, So I have to, I have to fulfill those and to build out the other things. So to do the podcast, to edit the video, to edit the audio, to pull a clip and post it on social. I have a process and a system for absolutely everything that I do. Um, so that I do it in the most efficient way possible. And I try and no one's perfect, but I try and make it so that I actually time block set time aside um, so that I can forecast when I'm going to actually commit to recording a podcast, editing a podcast, posting a podcast, setting it up in perhaps some, uh, you know, like a buffer or a Hootsuite or a HubSpot, whatever, so that those posts will go out over the course of the week. And I've actually set up these processes so that I can do it all and I know what to expect in terms of what my week's going to give me, what my corporate job's going to give me, how much time I want to spend with like my family. Um, we can't really see a lot of friends right now, but <laughs> if we could see friends, <laughs> how much time I could spend with them. And then also how much time I'm going to commit to actually blogging, recording, editing, posting, and whatnot. So just processes. And I've made sure that I've sort of, if you know, I think that processes are the first step. Um, but if you if you miss, uh, if you miss, you know, a a session, or if you miss um, doing a thing, you don't fall off the bandwagon. You don't, Mm -hmm. you know, if you, an analogy, a better analogy for people that perhaps aren't building their brand, which could be a fair amount of people on on this podcast. I'm not sure. Um, If you, you know, you're on a diet, and you eat a cookie, it's not like your diet's over. If you want to build a brand, and you forget to post something, it's not like (laughs) your brand is over. So, you know, <laughs> you just have to set up the processes, but you yeah. also have to realize um, that nobody's perfect. And if you do miss something, it's not the end of the world. It's the, it's the, it's continuing. It's the, it's the commitment over time that will make you successful in, in a side hustle or a side endeavor. Right. Um, so that's really, that's, that would be my best advice. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, one of the, one of, one of my cornerstones, and I preach this so much because you know, doing your, you know, and this is probably from your sales background and doing sales for myself, 13 years, time blocking was like a, mm-hmm. a like eye opener for me. Right. I mean, you know, and then making that time sacred and then, you yeah. know, owning it in that such a way, because when I did that, man, my revenues and my increase and my profitability, my, my balance in my life, everything just totally changed. And, you yeah. know, and that, but that came with systems too. So I love that. That's awesome. All right, so that's the takeaway one. So let's jump into some of these. So what I love is, so let's talk a little bit about, because I know you're a sales guy and I know you're doing a bunch of stuff. So what's your purpose, man? So, you know, how did you find your why? Because a lot of a lot of what I run into with people, you know, even with my kids and other people I talk to, they don't know. Do you have to yeah. know right now? I mean, so let's talk about purpose and why. You definitely don't have to know right now. And I would say that at any point, you can challenge your why, change your why, a reposition, refocus, and it's entirely okay. And I think that that's one of the biggest impediments of what you would consider to be success, right? Like what is success in life? Well, I think success is, is freedom, doing things that you like to, to do, uh, having freedom over your time, having freedom over 
um, what you contribute to and what you don't want to contribute to that. I, and that, in my opinion, is true success, just freedom. So what stops people from having freedom? Well, perhaps you've done a job for 20 years and you feel like you can't pivot. You, you can't find a new why or a new purpose. Um, I think that that's incredibly inaccurate and, and incredibly incorrect. And I think that that mindset is the number one reason why people that are perhaps later on in their career um, feel trapped in a certain job or a certain career. And I would say, um, if you feel that way, you're wrong and start <laughs> and like, like full stop, you're wrong. Cause you can start anything at any point in your life. So, and even, you know, we'll talk about your story on my show, but I know that as you were unpacking what you were doing, you've gone through several different pivots, so to speak, and you've, you've reached success and, and failure across different things you've done. And now look at what you're doing now. So, feel free to pivot anytime and know that that's okay. Um, now, what's my, what's my purpose? Um, I, think, I think my purpose or passion uh, comes from seeing, seeing my incremental success in the right direction. Um, so what I mean by that is if I'm taking something on, I don't need it to be an overnight success because overnight successes don't exist, but I do like to see it moving in the right direction. Um, because I think that if you commit to anything and you are making incremental steps in the right direction over a period of five or 10 years, you will be considered to the outside world, a massive success in that thing. I think that people just give up too soon. So um, sometimes when I speak about whether or not the thing, the thing that you're trying is working for you, um, just note that if you're making moves in the right direction and you're making incremental moves, as long as they're in the right direction, um, then keep going in that direction and you will eventually be successful. If you feel like you're backpedaling or you're stalled, that's another conversation. But for me, my passion and purpose is moving incrementally in the right direction towards something that I love doing, even if it's not paying all the bills yet. I have a podcast. It's not paying all the bills. I still work, right? I, I run a newsletter. I have a ton of subscribers, but it's not paying all the bills, but it's moving in the right direction. I see more subscribers. I see more downloads. I see more followers, whatever my metric is. And I'm not saying those are all the best metrics to follow, but it is moving in the right direction. And that's, that's what gets me excited about what I'm doing. Love that. I love the fact that, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, even when I talk about relationships, you know, at any point in time, if you look at it, everything is out of balance, your work, your life, everything. Yeah. But if you look over a long enough period of time, then it looks a whole lot different. Right. And so that's, that's how success is too. I was having this conversation the other day with, uh, with a friend and, and um, she was just getting ready to jump into the real estate business. And I said, I said, you know, it's seven to 10 years. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and that's any business. I mean, you, you know, if you're, if you see anyone successful, they've been doing it for longer than seven to 10 years. Yeah. Just do something for 10 years and tell me you're not really, really, it's, you know, you can, you can look at it different ways. Like the 10,000, is it 10,000 hours or whatever it is uh, yeah. doing it for 10 years. I see people that start the most boring, mundane businesses. Like, you know, like, I don't mean to hate on people that replace doors or yeah. do glass yeah, or, you know, yeah. like start a, start an auto body shop. But like, these are not considered like sexy industries to go into, but you do it for 10 years and they're multimillionaires. And everybody's looking at them like, my goodness, like that's the person to go to in Toronto for glass, for condos or for new home builds or something like that. And they've just been doing it for 10 years. And they just, not all these people learned this from somebody. Like, it's not like it was like a, something they picked up from their, their, their parents or whatnot. They just started something they knew. They did it for 10 years. They probably at one point were working for somebody and potentially saw issues in the industry they're working in and they tried to fix those issues and start their own thing and they just kept doing it. And then 10 years later, they're, you know, con compared to compared to somebody who's just been working in a job or somebody who has um, never tried to do their own thing, somebody would look at that person and be like, wow, they're incredibly successful at whatever it is they're doing just because they've stuck with it. So, yeah, you know, and I don't, I don't mean to beat on online classes because I do online classes too. Is, you know, people come out of an online class or master class or whatever, and they just expect that they're just going to be successful. And that's, that's a good start. It's a great start, but you still got to work. <laughs> I think, so. yes. So I have a love hate with online education um, because I think that it's positioned the wrong way. I think that it's targeted at the wrong, it's targeted the it. wrong way. So people that jump onto online education, they, they think that this is an escape from a nine to five. Right. That's a horrible way to look at, you know, online education, pivoting careers, going into to anything really, um, because it's never an escape from a nine to five. And I would say that it shouldn't be looked at as such. 
what if you're taking a class or, and this is not a conversation on online education, but if you're taking a class or if you're just starting a side hustle, if you're starting a podcast or if you're posting on a social platform, um, look at it as you expanding, uh, your, your, your expanding into side hustles, into, I hate the word multiple income streams, but technically multiple income streams, all those cliche buzzwords, but you, you aren't quitting your job. You're just finding new ways to, to build out another type of business. It could be for people that, you know, don't want to sell a product. It could be, um, it could be a knowledge uh, business, or it could be, um, you know, you can build out an audience and then you can go sell ad revenue. Or, you know, you can also just start like a, a merch store, sell some clothes, drop ship some clothes through Shopify and, and start building that out and learn how to do that. And that could be your revenue maker on the side, but you're not using it to replace your nine to five. You're just learning something on the side that could eventually become your full time, whatever it is. There's a million and one different ways to do that. But know that you're probably going to have to, first of all, when you start a business, always use OPM, other people's money. So, you know, if you're going to start that business, your nine to five is OPM. Commit to your nine to five. Don't, don't use your nine to five um, and, and not fulfill your duties or your goals with your nine to five. But right. definitely when you shut off at five o'clock or whatever, uh, work on something else that could potentially make you money in the long term, whatever that is. Um, and I think that's where people, you know, there's a couple other things here that we'll probably touch on that we'll go into this. But I think that uh, last year has shown us that that's a smart path to take, getting started down that that road. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. Last last year, you can look at, uh, uh, you know, even currently right now, you can look at it for, for many different, you know, facets, obviously. You know, one facet, though, that, you know, obviously, I think people are beginning to pick up on is people were able to do some things differently and try yeah. some new things and, and actually were maybe forced to be a little bit uncomfortable and try some new stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I definitely, I love that. So talk to me a little bit about, so when, you know, so, you, you know, you've been now your backstory and everything else. So you're, you're doing your regular job. So what caused you to say, man, I got, I got more bandwidth. I want to do more. Mm -hmm. And so when did that journey start for you? Um, that journey started, so uh, we have to sort of go back a little bit. So I was working just, so I was actually working for a company called Bell Canada, um, which is basically the Verizon of eight or AT&T of Canada, just like a huge telco. Um, so very traditional. I had that job. Uh, I had that job in high school um, and moved through different markets. So started in like, you know, B to C and then B to SMB and then, you know, B to mid market. And then eventually like, you know, B to B enterprise. And I was selling and I was doing quite well. Um, and I've never, I never, ever, ever thought that I could do, um, you know, build a brand for myself. It never even crossed my mind. I don't even think at the time I had social media or I had it and I was using it, you know, for like, for bullshit. And then I just, <laughs> and then I, and then I like, I killed all my accounts. Anyway, after Bell, I worked for a company um, called Digicom, which is also a telecom company. Um, and there again, I was doing like enterprise sales uh, when I started, but actually what had happened was um, the, the director who hired me left uh, almost immediately. Um, there was a, a gap to fill. I actually, I actually put together a presentation, presented to the CEO. It was like a private company um, to basically lead some of lead their sales team in the interim. Um, and that actually ended up working out quite well. I did quite well in that role. And I put together a presentation, put it in front of him and he moved me into like an actual sales leadership role. And I just realized that if I could do that, if I could create something out of nothing, basically take, take my own fate, take my own destiny, take my own career into my own hands and, and force that. And that was successful. Well, technically I could do anything. So, so what did that, so, so that's Hell not, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not entirely, you know, it's not entirely young and, and full of ambition. And you think like, you know, you can do anything in the world. So needless to say, left that company started trying to do my own consulting. Cause I thought I was like God's gift to business. Right. Which <laughs> right. you're young there, you think yes. you know everything yeah so it didn't quite work out um lost a lot of money uh you know probably lost a lot of hair too just trying to trying to be a consultant trying to build my own business I tried a couple different things um some of them worked out to some various degrees but nothing really uh nothing really you know to write home about because now I'm working for a company again but I did realize <laughs> I did realize that if I wanted to do something, I, I just had to take it, you know, by the, by the handle and just go do it. Um, so with that mentality, um, plus a, after a few, I guess, humbling um, failures on my own, what I, what I really 
decided was I want to build something, but I, I don't need to kill myself to do it. I don't need right. to go a hundred percent in day one. So let me build something that has some longevity. Let me build something that I enjoy. So I'm not stressed about it, but let me do it on the side while I'm still making money, while I still have something that's, um, uh, you know, secure and, and safe. So I started building out a podcast that I've seen do well. I watched uh, Tim Ferriss. I watched um, uh, Tom Bilyeu. Uh, actually, I watched London Real when he was still doing podcasts. Now he's doing some other stuff. But and I was like, well, I could I could do that. And I get to speak about sales and marketing, which I love. I get to speak to all these really cool people. So let me do that on the side. And that's when I realized, well, if I'm going to do that, then I should build a, a brand for myself. And the topics that I'm speaking about in the podcast, when I first started, were very heavily focused on sales and marketing, which were already things that I was doing in my job anyways. So it was just sort of this uh, organic uh, realization that I didn't have to go 100% into building something, but I could do it on the side. Um, I had to develop systems so that I could do it successfully on the side so that I wasn't stressed out and you know working until three in the morning every single day. Um, but... I, I just took it on. I just took it on. And then I ended up going back to work. So actually now I'm working for a company. I'm building out the podcast. Um, and, and that's sort of, that, that was the genesis of understanding that I could do whatever I wanted, but I didn't have to, I didn't have to stress about doing it. I didn't have to kill myself over it. Um, and if I guess the, the, to find the bandwidth was really, well, I wanted it to be successful and I'm so damn stubborn that I wouldn't let it not be successful. So I had to find the systems for it to be successful because I've already started it. I've already committed to it. And now I still have this nine to five commitment. So it was sort of like uh, the bandwidth was, I, I had to find the bandwidth because of my personality and I didn't want to quit it. Um, so I forced myself to learn how to do it more efficiently, more effectively. And that's sort of that path that I took. And now it's sort of growing well. I'm still doing something. So, yeah, I think that was, you know, again, you know, one of my selfish reasons for wanting to have you on this is, is to talk about that bandwidth. You know, one is the purpose, you know, because then when you have the purpose and you have the direction set and forth, but yeah. And the next limiting thing that people put in their way, there's an obstacle is right. Okay. Well, I don't have enough time or enough resources or those kind of things. And so you hit on everything you hit on, you know, how to come up with finances, how to come up with the time, how to become efficient, how not mm -hmm. to make yourself crazy, you know, yeah. um, you know, all of those things. And so I love, you have I to love, want it too. Love, yeah, no, absolutely. You yeah. have to want it. You have, you have to want it. Um, so give me some, uh, give me just a quick fire round here. Give me your top two, um, your top two tips for life and top two tips for work. And I know I spent a lot of time talking about workplace and life place, and there are some differences. And so we should keep them, but they're also the same. So Talk yeah. to me because I want to see if you're going to blend the two together, honestly. So I'm setting it up a little bit. Um, no, that's fine. That's fair. That's yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I would so say top top tips for top tips for work. Okay. Um, these are going to be so vanilla, but they're so important. And like I, I, so the first one is is find somebody who's done it before. Learn from people who have done it before, and that doesn't always manifest in the same way for everybody. So for me, sure. I did have in person men mentors, but I also went on Udemy. I went on YouTube. I just read, I listened to podcasts. I actually preferred podcasts over audiobooks just because I found they were more succinct to the point. Um, but learn from people because you don't have to, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and don't just think that there's one mentor for everything because there's not. There's right. somebody who's better at posting on Twitter and how to, how to write the best tweet. There's somebody who's better at how to find out which interview questions get the most out of you know, your guests. There's some people who are better at uh, optimizing your energy throughout the day. Like you, you look at Tim Ferriss for that. You look at Matthew Kobach for, um, for Twitter. You look at, well, I would say, um, I actually do like, uh, like Brian Rose from London Real for, for his interview questions, even though he's now a little bit controversial. But <laughs> you look at all these different individuals and you learn something from each one of them, right? And then you, you, in, you incorporate that into your life. And I think that so that's here's my Here's my a half, million a dollar, half. my million... Here's my million dollar, million dollar idea I'm going to give away. So I've been thinking okay. about this for a while. I've been thinking about coming up with an app or some sort of uh, some algorithm where you could take all of the people that poured their life into you that have some sort of impact on you, get a picture of them and you, how they do those mosaics. 
right? Yeah. And then it's a picture <laughs> of you, but then it's all of those people's pictures with inside you because so many people have poured into us. And I don't think we realize that, right? And yeah. so I love your idea of finding the people that have come before you. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's that would be the number one. And then I think um I think the second uh life work uh hack, it's a, it definitely is a work hack, is to is to ever think that you've gone too far to reposition or to go back. So I know a lot of people mm -hmm. that go to a point in their career and don't want to pivot into another type of career, don't want to learn something new. Um, for me, it was hard to go work for somebody after I've already taken the step towards like entrepreneurship, right? That's not easy. Okay. But I think that you just got to humble yourself and you got to do what's, do what's best for you. And, okay. and, and just know where you want to ha like have that, you know, three, five, 10 year plan or one, three, five year plan, whatever it is, have that plan, but be, be flexible with the way you get there. And I right. think that that's very important. And I think that people's ego gets, gets in the way of their happiness more often than not, because yeah, I could have just kept struggling in, in an environment that wasn't conducive to, you know, my happiness, my, my growth, my success, working as a consultant, you know, you're doing 40 hours of client work during the week, and then you're finding new clients after those 40 hours of client work. And like, you know, at the time I wasn't with the best partners either. So I could have just stayed in that. And I could have probably drawn that out another year and a half, two years, but like, I didn't want to, I didn't have to. So I see people that even have an issue moving jobs if they're not going to get the same title as the job they had previous. I can guarantee you a VP at a startup is not the same as a director or even a sales manager at like a fortune 100. So right. you're laughing because it's true, but people have this so issue. True. So just, so, but you know how, you know how if you could go work for a Fortune 100, or you say you work for a fan company, you work for Apple or Google or, or and Netflix, whatever. Would you tell me that if you're a VP at some no name shit startup that nobody's ever heard of, that you you're bootstrapped or nobody wants to invest with you, and you got like a, you got like a say like a, a, an associate director role at Google, that you wouldn't you wouldn't take that jump because on your LinkedIn. You'd have to go from VP to associate director. And now you're worried about your friends and family and your LinkedIn yeah. community that nobody really gives a shit about. You. Right. <laughs> nobody gives yeah, a yeah. shit about, you know, but it's just, you just have to put your ego aside and, and people who if, like, it's okay to fail. Like all the, all the cliches are so true. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try something else. It's okay to pivot. It's okay. Like these are all okay. Yeah. I would say. I would say that probably hold like the, the, the ego and, and what you think people think of you holds, holds you back more than anything else. You just get in your own head and you, you kill your own career that way, or you, you kill your own happiness that way. So, so the trick question coming around at you now, so yeah. those apply to life as well, right? Oh, oh yeah. hundred percent. How many times you've been stuck in uh, an unhealthy or toxic relationship? You're just like, we're already here. Parents already know her. It's easy. You know, there's definitely some, uh, it's a little more complicated at some points when you may have kids or whatnot, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think at, at some point, all these things do apply in life as well. So if you have a toxic friend group, if you have, you know, uh, people that don't, don't do anything to detract or negative, whatever, um, yep. a lot of, a lot of, you know, see, so you, you see a lot of people that say like, you know, if you're going to be successful, like you know, you only want to be around individuals that are smarter than you, better than you or whatever. And that, that's true. You do want to be in a group of people that um, you don't want to feel like the smartest person in the room, but right. you don't, you don't have to necessarily get rid of everybody in your circle or your friend group, except if they're really detracting, but if they are detracting from you, they're really bringing you down. If they're, if they're negative, if they're, if they're hurting you um, in any way, then don't, don't, don't feel obliged to keep those people in your life. Um, not everybody, not everybody has to, not everybody has to add incredible value to your life, but if they do detract from your life, then definitely try and move away. And I think that, yeah, it definitely applies to personal life for sure. Awesome. So, you know, we're coming up, we're just over our, you know, 30 minutes time. I try to keep these at 30 minutes, Scott, you know, cause I know yeah, people are sure. listening. You know, I try to try to pack as much as I can. in. so, you know, as we round out, you know, I hope, I hope what people are hearing is they're hearing from Scott is. You can run parallel paths. You can do it. Your obstacles are most likely you. You know, the things you're doing in work, in life, they're probably the same. Put systems and process to it. Um, yeah. You know, your purpose can change, which I love. You know, so many people get wrapped up in, you know, they got to be whatever it is. And, I, you know, there's, I guess there's a lyric in the song, 
um, some of the most interesting people I've ever met didn't know what they wanted to do until they were 50, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah. you know, um, it's a, you know, so those kind of things. So if you had to on your, what's on your heart right now, you know, someone listening to this, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but on your heart right now, what's one thing you'd want to leave someone that may hear this, that you may be able to help, you know, maybe give them a push in the universe. What, what would you leave somebody with? Yeah. Um, I loved, I loved this, uh, this, this thought. Um, there's, there's actually a book about this called uh, Extreme Ownership. If you're into leadership books, you'll, you'll recognize the title, but it's about taking responsibility for, for where you're at. And just knowing that everything that's happened is a result of your choices, your decisions. So if you take responsibility for everything in your life, I truly do believe um, that you'll look at life differently. And, and sometimes that can be construed as negative, but it, it doesn't have to be. So for example, if you, this is gonna, this is gonna be potentially controversial, but I hope, it, I hope it resonates the right way. If you were laid off in COVID, that's outside of, that's outside of your, you, know, you can't do anything about that. That's, it's horrible, it happened. But there are people who were laid off and who are living off unemployment or in Canada, there's CERB or in the States or stimulus checks. And they're, you know, they're really not doing well and they don't have any money and they're just very depressed. But there's also people, like you mentioned, that have been laid off or have had their businesses go under and are probably now making more money or doing something different than what they were doing a year and a half ago. So I'm not saying it's easy, but if you do take responsibility for your actions and you take steps, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of work, but I can guarantee you taking some steps will move you in the right direction versus doing nothing at all. And just assuming that your life's over, the world's over and waiting for a handout from people because the handout doesn't usually come. So I would say take responsibility regardless. And that, that mindset will hopefully push you in the right direction. Couldn't have said it better, man. That's awesome. See, this cool. is why I told I told y'all this is why we had Scott on today. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't These are awesome somebody. questions. I'm not going to add value, so man. So thank you so much. Hey, everybody, thank you for listening today for the CEO for Life Experience podcast. Um, again, I'm going to link all the information up how to get in touch with Scott either above or below. But you know, do reach out for him. Go deeper. Like I said, you know, the guests that we have on, I really try to to have people that you really should take the time to connect with because. Um, you know, that's, that's the purpose of this is get connected and, um, and take, like, like Scott just said, take responsibility. So thanks Scott for the time. Really appreciate it, man. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll see everybody on the next episode.